La Boulet and step on it. I'm going to extricate my sister from the clutches of that David Vickers if I have to prune him away. Gardner and Kramer Enterprises got these for me while I was waiting for you. By the way, you were late. Don't let it happen again. This has been a day from hell. But now I'm going to go home and I'm going to slice David's baloney. I'm going to sever his ties with my sister and I'm going to cut him off without a cent. Oh, you idiot. You missed the turn. I know I missed the turn. Criminy, you talk a lot. And why are you posing as my chauffeur? Driving Miss crazy. And before you think you can threaten me with some large gardening tool, you're going to answer some questions. I don't owe you anything. Oh, I think you do. This here, this is Rue Hip... Rue Hipn... Rue Hipnol. It's difficult to pronounce. It's that drug that you give people to incapacitate them so you can do anything you want with them. What's a roofie doing in the good doctor's bag, huh? Who did you give it to, Dorian? And why would you think that had anything to do with me? I said I found it in your doctor's bag. And how did you get hold of my doctor's bag? It was in plain sight in the back of your closet, along with a young budding filmmaker. Where to begin? What were you doing in my closet, and uh, who was this budding whatever? Marco. He was trying to catch me in flagrante with your ward. Well, first my sister, and now my foster daughter? You pervert! I'm standing before you, asking you to give my father a chance. My dad shouldn't have to suffer for what I made him do. He loves you, Mrs. Davidson. man do you think I am? Oh, you're not a man. You're a depraved animal. That kid is 16 years old. Langston knows that you despise my marriage with your sister, so she tried to seduce me and get it on tape so she could prove that I was cheating on Addie. I tried to seduce you? I told you. The whole thing was a setup. Hence Marco in the closet. She did all of that for me. Now oh, what? You approve of this? She's a Kramer already. Oh, God. Take me straight home. I want to see for myself that that girl is not traumatized by what you did. Uh-uh. You don't get to go anywhere until I find out why you've got the date rape drug in your medical bag. Not that a Kramer woman wouldn't do anything to get a guy into bed. If, indeed, that drug was in my medical bag, it was probably there from a time long ago when I was treating somebody for... Anxiety, sleep deprivation, or any of the other legitimate reasons why one would prescribe that drug. Yeah, I think you'd use it to get Charlie drunk. Charlie is a drunk, just as you are a degenerate. Neither one of you needs narcotics or anything else to get you to do what you do best. Now, take me straight home or so help me. I'm calling the police. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh oh. Uh, what? Why are you stuck? Oh, David! Did you decide to abduct me and not check your gas gauge first? I was running out of time. I used all the money I had from Addie's purse to pay off your driver. You're a moron. You know that, don't you? I mean, you decide to abduct me, you drive us out here in the middle of nowhere, and then you run out of gas. What are you waiting for? Get out of the car and start walking. If you think for a second that I'm going to lift a finger to help you, you are seriously deluded. Oh, and if you think for a second I'm going to spend the night out here with you, you're seriously deluded. Do something. You know what? You're on your own. Why don't you mix yourself a roofie cocktail? Sleep it off in the back. Where are you going? Away from you. Take a gas can. Bite my knee. This is kidnapping. You know that? Or oh, something damn close to it. There's gonna be payback. What?
watch out for the walls. For me. If I were aiming for you, you would be roadkill by now. Standing right over here. You could have killed me, and you know it. Your responses have slowed down. No, Dorian, I brake for animals, even your kind. Uh -huh. Actually, the brakes on that car didn't take hold until just before I stopped. Oh. Now, what are you doing out here hitchhiking? I am not hit. It's a very long story, but... Okay, fine. That idiot David Vickers commandeered my car. He dressed up as my chauffeur. He tried to abduct me, and, and he did not bother to check the gas gauge. Then my cell phone doesn't work in this forest, and your car was the first one to show up in what seemed like an eternity. David left you here? Can you imagine that? Actually, yes, I can. <sighs> oh. Well, I'm glad somebody showed up, even if it did have to be you. <laughs> Open up, Vicky. This isn't funny. Vicky! Vicky! Do you think you can leave me here? No. I know I can. Vicky! Unlock this door at once! Do you hear me? All right, I don't like it any better than you do. That of all people, you turn out to be my savior on this godforsaken road. But you cannot leave me here. Are you going to stop yelling? Indeed I will. As soon as you unlock this door. Hold on a minute. Meet me up front. Oh. Okay. Fine. What is it? I'll tell you what it is. And you are going to do as I ask, or I'm going to leave you here. Now, I'm going to give you a ride, but it's going to cost you. Oh, fine. I'll pay you whatever you want. I don't want your money. It's going to cost you your time, Dorian. And if you don't like it, well, your feet are going to be hurting a lot worse than they are now because those shoes are not made for walking. Oh, I get it. Which one of your little friends am I talking to now? I don't know. Because I'm all of them now, Dorian. Don't forget. So you're going to be dealing with the whole lot of us. Hmm. Which one was driving the car when you tried to run me down in the middle of the okay. road? I wasn't kidding about that, all right? The brakes really did not take hold until I had to try to stop because you were standing in the middle of the road. All right, it's all my fault. Accidents happen, Dorian. Sometimes it's nobody's fault. I'm on this back road because I was on my way to the vineyard. Nash Brennan's vineyard. Yes. The investors are going to foreclose on the property within a few days. Well, I really am very sorry for your family's financial Just woes. Just listen. I told Natalie that I would drive out to the vineyard and pick up a case of wine that Nash had cellared for Bree's wedding. And that's what I intend to do. What? The, the Nash's vineyard is 10 miles in that direction, and La Boulet is just three miles in that direction. So wouldn't it be a lot easier to just drive me there first? See, I knew you were going to do this. That's why I said it was going to cost you your time. 
Vicky, it's not that far out of your way. Fine. Then walk. If you want to lift, you're coming to the vineyard with me first. It's up to you. Okay, while well, the prospect of being cooped up in that cheesy car with you all the way out of the way to the vineyard is unappealing. It's more appealing than waiting around here for the next vehicle to come along. Oh, I don't know, Dorian. Somebody might come along who would be the perfect man for you. A psychotic killer, maybe. If it would get me away from you, I'd jump right in his car. Let's go before it gets too late. Good. Oh, wait a minute. I'm leaving my purse and cell phone in my car. to know that the car is able to stop, don't you think? I thought you said that the brakes were good. Well, I'm making certain, aren't I? Will you stop whining? Just be glad you're not still standing out in the middle of the road, flailing your arms around like an idiot. Oh, and please, this ride is going to be a silent one. Fine. <sighs> David has some nerve leaving me stranded in the middle of nowhere. Oh, thank goodness. Really, doesn't your daughter have some decent CDs in this car? Maybe something classical. No, we're not going to listen to anything. Fine. I'll just close my eyes and try to get some rest. No, I want to talk to you, Dorian. I thought you said... I want to talk to you about Charlie. You want to talk about Charlie? Mm hmm <sighs> What a loathsome subject. Loathsome? My goodness, that must be because your dealings with him have been so dishonorable. <laughs> no, dear. Charlie was your mistake. Oh, I cherish every single moment I had with Charlie. Then what a pity you had to dump him because he is a hopeless alcoholic and a pathological liar. I'm so sorry. It really is a heartbreaking story. I was actually hoping you could shed a little light on a certain aspect of that heartbreaking story. And what would I know about Charlie that you don't already know? Well, you know that he almost drank himself to death. Of course you know that. You were needling me about it. Needling you? That was me reaching out to you, offering a gesture of sympathy. My goodness, was it? Well, remind me to duck next time you do that. You know, you have become a very paranoid, hypercritical person, and, and I must tell you, it's terribly unattractive. Why are you trying to change the subject? I am merely trying to inform you that I can relate, all right? I know exactly what it's like to love a drunk. He was an alcoholic, a recovering alcoholic, and yes, he conquered his addiction, but before that there were, there were blackouts, there were relapses. Mel was an absolutely wonderful man. He was a gifted newspaper man and an even better friend. Well, it's very kind of you to switch seats with your dear friend on a plane that was destined to crash. Are you serious? You think I wanted that to happen? That I wanted Mel to die? I'm just saying that it didn't turn out the way it was supposed to. Mel should be here, not you. <laughs> 